Are you feeling the calling to start or grow a business that is so aligned with you and everything that makes up who you are? Do you know that there has to be a way to do this without so much hustle and without chasing the latest shiny object, but you're just not sure how? You can definitely have a dream business that improves, not consumes your life, that allows you to work with soulmate clients while helping you and your family financially and in all ways. You can elevate yourself to be the entrepreneur who has all of her desires. I'm going to show you how on the Elevated Femmes Movement. Hi, welcome back to another episode on the Fit Femmes Movement podcast. Today I have Emma Farrick with me and I'm really excited to chat some operations, motherhood and other stuff with her. She's uh, a mama of two, she's newlywed, um, exciting things happening for her. Um, and we're going to be talking about some, some necessary things for business owners. Um, some things that I feel like we tend to forget about. We tend to kind of leave for, um, you know, last minute, or we don't put as much priority on it as other things in our businesses. And, uh, I think it really makes a difference when, once we have all these ducks in a row. So Emma is founder of Elf Operations. She is an operations and systems strategist. And um, I'm going to let her tell us a little bit more about herself. So Emma, tell us how you got started, like how you became an entrepreneur. Um, Did you know you wanted to be an entrepreneur? Like tell us a little bit of your story with how you got to where you are now. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me, Julie. I'm so excited to be here and connect with your audience. I got started in entrepreneurship. Uh, it's almost three. Yeah. I guess it'd be three years this month. Actually. I think it's actually like on the day. Um, now that I think about it and I look at the date, um, I started my business when I was still working full-time, like a lot of moms do. Um, I had just become a single mother. I was struggling in just living in survival mode because I was, a single mom due to domestic violence. So I was struggling with that and coping with, you know, how do I raise my child um, by myself while, you know, working full time, dealing with court systems, dealing with the legal system with not just custody, but, you know, um, criminal matters, like not mine, but his, in a sense of making sure, um, justice was served. I guess that's very cliche, but I was just trying to manage my day to day. And I was living in survival mode in a fog almost. And I was like, how am I going to support myself financially? Um, because one income was definitely not enough, but I didn't want, um, my abuser to have financial control over me anymore because that was one form of abuse that I suffered when we were in the relationship. So I dealt with financial abuse, emotional abuse, and physical abuse. Um, so it really ran the gamut and it's that if anyone's experiencing that knows anyone who's experienced that finance finances is typically the, one of the biggest reasons people don't leave. Um, and I was just truly so naive about my finances. So that's why I'm a big advocate of financial literacy because I was fresh out of college. I just thought, you know, I can't support this baby on my own. I'm not making enough because that's what I was told for over a year that I could never do it. I could never be an entrepreneur. I wasn't smart enough. So as part of my moving on in my therapy and just taking control back in my life, I decided to start my VA business um, so that I didn't have to sacrifice more time with my daughter since I was still working full time. So I bought my business. I always say like from 10 PM to midnight, I was working my butt off on my business and on the weekends and I grew my business as a side hustle. And then when the pandemic started, um, I had enough interest. I had enough clients, um, that I felt comfortable ish. Not really. I didn't have like the best time, but with the pandemic, I had the choice to continue to go to work and leave my daughter at home with my now husband, but we were living together at the time and he had been laid off. So he was taking care of her. And I was so frustrated with having to be at work and not being at home with my daughter, um, since daycares were shut down. And I decided I was going to take the jump into full-time entrepreneurship. And that's what led to elf operations as it is today, 
being an operations and systems consulting firm for small business owners who want to scale and grow their business. Um, we really try to meet small business owners where they're at and we want to make it attainable for all small business owners to have a life that they love and they feel that they're thriving in because I've seen it with so many entrepreneurs. They feel like they have to hit that six figure mark or they don't need to think about it until the multi six figure mark. Think about their operations, think about their systems, but they're being told to delegate. They're being told to hire. They're being told all these things and there's ways, there's different ways to do it. So I want to be that, that operations firm and that, that partner to small business owners who feel empowered to have a business, a successful business and be present for their family um, when they need to be, because that was so important for me. And that was my background. Also, I forgot to mention that part. I was in operations and process improvement. So I was managing um, multi million dollar projects with resource planning, inventory planning, process improvement. Um, and I decided, you know, I wanted to work with business owners that actually cared and I was actually going to make an impact for. So working with um, service providers predominantly for the past couple of years has been so fulfilling to me to see them go from solopreneurs to building out remote teams to, you know, be, being able to have some passive income as well with their, with their systems. I love that. And I hope that you were so proud of yourself for, you know, you've been able to create over the past few years going from like a horrible situation um, and, you know, doing the best that you can for your, your daughter. You have two, I believe, right? You have two daughters now. Yeah, so, I have two daughters now. Um, yeah. So it's just, I think you're a great example to all women, all moms, I think, because, you know, as moms, no matter what situations we're in, we always want the best for our kids. Right. So right. taking that uncomfortable leap to, to leave your, the quote unquote security of your nine to five to be like, right. okay, I'm comfortable ish, right. Not a hundred percent. Cause I feel like there's never, it's never a hundred percent. Like no one's ever a hundred percent comfortable doing no. the uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. So just finding like that, you know, finding enough of like a, desire to be like, all right, I'm going to go all in and I'm going to go after what I want, because I know that this is something that I can make a difference in and something that I'm good at. Um, so I really, I love that story. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, yeah, about systems and operations, because as you were starting to say, it's something that a lot of business owners don't really put a lot of priority on. I feel like we are, you know, and I've seen it and I've even done it myself where it's like the, the push is like, all right, you got to get out there and you got to market and you got to sell, you got to sell, 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 but it's like, all right, you bring these clients on, but then how do you retain them? If your yeah. back end is a mess, right. Or how do you even onboard them properly? If you don't have the capacity to do it or the, you know, the, the systems that make it simple. Cause sure. Yeah. Like, and I've heard this question, like I've heard this at being asked, so it's not something that I'm making up, but like, if somebody, if, you know, if I'm talking to a, an entrepreneur and I say to her, okay, if I handed you like a hundred clients tomorrow, like, would you be able to work with them? Like, would you be able to bring them on? And for a lot of people, the answer would be no, like, yes, they would love to have a hundred clients, <laughs> not me, right. but, um, but they wouldn't have the capacity, the systems to be able to make that happen. So yes, I would love for you to share just a little bit of like what your pro, like how you would help somebody create like order and control and just make things run smoother for an entrepreneur. Yeah. I feel like there's it. I also want to say like operations is age. It changes as your business changes. Like their sales and marketing are definitely super crucial. I always talk about when I'm talking about systems and teaching systems in um, different programs that I go in and I've like guest coached in a couple of different places where you have to have three main systems. Like no matter what business you run, whether that be a product-based or service-based business, you need to have at least three foundational systems Now There's more, there's like seven key bit like systems that they talk about, but 
for online service providers or, you know, online e-commerce, those don't apply until you get to a certain level. So I always say like the three core ones that you need when you're starting out is your sales system, a marketing system, and your deliverability system. So that is what you were talking about when you're onboarding those clients, what's that experience like, how are you delivering your service to them? Or if it is a product-based business, how are you delivering the goods to them? And then managing them all the way through um, to either offboarding or upselling them into the next um, way to work with you and whether that what that ascension model looks like, but it is easier and cheaper to retain clients than it is to find new clients. So it really ties into every aspect of your business, your operations, because I work with clients and I, they're like, well, they think of CRMs and project management tools. And that's what I do a lot of setups in, but it has to do with your, it has to touch your marketing system. It has to touch your sales system. Like everything's inner wine together. Um, and it's your process of what, of how you're completing, um, those steps, whether that be manual or automated. And I always say, start out doing the process manually because you have to work out those kinks. I see a lot of entrepreneurs and small business owners, like I'm a, a, I love automation. I'm always about like, how can I make this better? But I want to do it a couple of times first, create the parameters, create the standardization, um, around what that process needs and how I want it done before I'm going to automate it. So don't bypass the manual piece. Like don't look down on that manual piece is what I, I think I'm trying to say there. And, um, when you are creating those systems, it doesn't have to be fancy. So I have what I call the simple ops framework. So when you're like thinking of sales, thinking of marketing, and you're thinking of your client deliverability, you want it to feel high end, but not difficult. So I know many, many multi six figure, seven figure entrepreneurs who have their back ends a mess, but you just don't know it until you're in the program or whatever the offer is, or if you're working for them. Um, so I don't want anyone to feel intimidated by that, but there are key things that you can do um, and key tools that you can use even at the startup phase, like ClickUp or Dubsado or HoneyBook that are low cost and easy to implement that are going to help keep you organized and help wow your, your clients. You always want to be thinking about what does it look like from their end and their perspective? Because I've seen entrepreneurs launch offers and then they don't have anything set up to back it up because people will hear like just pre-sell. Okay. But you have to have some type of client journey mapped out or planned out for them in a little bit of a sense. Like there's rolling with punches and, but then there's it being not um, a great experience for the client. Right. Yeah. I think there's, there's a difference too. And I like how you brought the fact that things don't need to be fancy. Like, and I always believe that simple is better because, um, when you start to make things too fancy, you just get into like complicated things. And then it's hard to, you know, it's hard to teach someone else to do something or it's, it's difficult to have your client do, you know, like I do podcasts. So like if I did some really fancy, like I don't know. I can't even think of something, but I have I had some crazy like a sauna board or something that my client was like, I don't know what the heck this is. Right. Like it, right. I, I'm just being fancy to be fancy, but it really like my client could care less. Right. So it's, yes. it's about like finding the things that are going to help you give your client client a good experience. Um, but also like make sense. <laughs> I think, um, uh, right. Sense Cause I've doing. Seen a lot of people, they just use all these tools that they don't actually need. And it's just whatever the expert or guru or their coach is telling them to use because that's what they use. And they don't really assess if it makes sense for their business at all or their clients' needs. So I set up tools and systems and processes for clients because they that's what they want. And they and I'm like trying to warn them, like, hey, this isn't really probably the best for you just because your coach did it, Mm -hmm. you know, like, especially if they're not in the same industry, you really need to assess, like, does this tool or this software make sense for me and my business? Like how I want to run my company, 
how my people are going to use it and does it integrate with the tools I'm already using and will it support me in like six months to a year when I'm growing? Like, is it going to carry me into that next level or am I going to have to upgrade or am I going to have to switch? Um, yes. You know, those are that's things to consider. Really, that's a really good point too, especially I think for coaches. So for anyone who's listening, who's a coach, um, that's something you want, you want to consider, especially I, I see people run into this issue where they're, they're like, oh, I'm just going to do the free thing, the free system, mm -hmm. or I'm going to do the lowest priced one. But then what they don't realize it's like, okay, once you hit like their max, you're going to have to upgrade. And if you don't upgrade with them, then you're going to have to switch to something else. And, you know, that's a pain in the neck, unless, you know, you have yep. somebody to help you transfer it over. Like you have to figure out how to do that. So in the end, it's just creating more work. So it's doing that initial research, um, or, you know, asking around, figuring out like what makes sense, like what systems make sense for you to use. And like you said, there's so many options that are like decent, you know, re, uh, uh, relatively low cost. Um, right. You know, so you don't need to be spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on softwares, um, on software, but it's just about like not always going for like the cheapest or the free thing. Right. Just because you don't want to spend the money at the moment. And it's cheaper to pay for the software than it is to hire out, you know, like it's cheaper and easier to manage softwares and tools and manage yourself than it is to hiring out because hiring out is its own system. Like it's own, like you have H almost like an HR system that you need to build out and manage. If you want people to be successful, they think like they can just hire people on and they'll know what to do unless you're going to pay top dollar for a consultant who's going to come in and build it or teach you how to do it, or they have years of experience, you really need to guide them. I think a lot of people get, um, they think like, oh, I'll just hire a VA and it'll magically, the problem will solve itself. And that's a lot of unfair pressure to put on these VAs because I was once a VA and, you know, like granted, I had a business background, so I could pick up a lot and I was resourceful, but there are people who are just VAs not just VAs in like any sense, but they don't have certain specialties right? or they don't, aren't like a specifically a marketing VA or a tech VA. Like sometimes you need to have a specialty um, when you're hiring and they don't sometimes think about that. They think like, I'm just going to hire someone and they can do it all for me. And that's like a really an unfair real expectation to put on them. If you don't even know how to do it yourself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point too. Unless you're willing to train someone yeah. who doesn't have the skill, then just hire somebody who has the skill. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Which is going to come into like, what, what's your budget. And right. I always run into that when I'm talking with people, because the done for you options are going to cost you a lot more, but it's going to save you a ton of time in the, the long run because I've gone through it and I've done it for other people. And our team is able to work in the background while you're still serving clients and making sales instead of you taking away time from that to build this backend system, which is something um, I don't think they think about always when we're on it, like prior to getting on a call is they think, um, you know, the do, do it yourself is just going to happen. But I've seen a lot of people, it takes a couple of months to, you know, do it yourself when you're also trying to maintain your current workload. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And it just, it, it's all about, figuring out what, um, and we talked a little bit about like priorities, right? So we want the priorities to be spread out because we do need, you know, if you have a business, you need to bring in sales, you need to market yourself, you need to grow your leads, but you also need to have systems in place, not necessarily all the fanciest tools, but just the systems so that you can, you know, have somebody eventually help you out so that you're not the only one, especially right. if if like the person is a solopreneur at the moment, um, to actually be able to scale their business. Um, and I, there was something I wanted to say on that related to that point, and I've lost my train of thought, but it's going to come back to me. But I think it's also about, um, another point that I wanted to make here is also like having the right people supporting you, because if the, if the entrepreneur is doing all the things 
And I know there's entrepreneurs that I know who have a small team and yet they're still doing so much because they're afraid to delegate more things out. But it's like, just think about it. Like if you did, if you focus more on the things that like were your true zone of genius, I feel like, mm-hmm. I mean, when I'm focusing, when I have weeks, I mean, some weeks I do more than I should, but when I have like a week where I'm like, okay, this week, I really just like focused on my marketing. Cause I love marketing and serve my current clients and my client work. I just, I'm, I feel so good. I feel energized. I feel like joyful. I'm excited, you know, on weeks where I have a lot of other things on my plate, I'm more stressed out. You know, I'm like anxious. I get impatient. So it's, I'm sure this happens to every, like every other entrepreneur out there. So if you already have a team, it's one thing if someone doesn't have a team yet, but if you have a team, I feel like it's also very important to make sure that you're using that team like efficiently and effectively so that you can really show up in your zone of genius. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's just another point that I wanted to make there that I feel like is related to what we we've been talking about today. And, um, uh, and yeah, to so, build off of that, like, just to say, like, yeah, you know, okay. I'm a proponent of like, I built my business to handle 10 K months by myself, not by myself, but like I was able to do it. I had like a social media person helping me a little bit, but they weren't like full time or anything like that. Um, but I built my business off of the systems to get me to that point. But then there's still a point where you're going to have manual stuff that has to happen because whenever I'm working with clients, we map out their processes and we focus on, and that's why it's going to be different for each entrepreneur. And I always say operations is so customizable is because, you know, there are things that you prioritize and how you want to do business that is going to be like a must have personal touch that cannot be automated. We try to put personal automatic automation into place as much as possible with clients, but if it makes more sense to have, you know, someone DMing like you or, you know, eventually hiring that out as like a social seller. But if it, if they're buying something that's a lot with you, then I'm going to say, you know, it makes that sense for you to be the one DMing them, even though it's going to take a little bit more time, but like you need to build that connection. And if they're the one converting the sale, you know, it can't be always be someone else. Um, but you, you can definitely have a balance. Sorry. Like you you can have a balance and it is once you start to delegate, you have to trust that team and let them own it because I've definitely worked with entrepreneurs who, um, and that's something I struggled with in the past year is giving up those tasks to my team members. Um, but remembering we're all human and, you know, most mistakes can be forgiven. You're not, we're not in any business that's life threatening, So Mm -hmm. it's okay. And that's going to help your team learn. You need to be able to lead and guide them through it. Um, and be able to always remember like what parameters are I, what am I giving them? Yeah. I always say like, is it my fault that like, did I not give them enough information? What could I have done better? Or, you know, how can we turn this into a learning experience? It doesn't have to, like, I think people get so worried about quality, which is important, but if you have a good SOP and you have a good process already in play, um, and a great tool for that is scribe. It's kind of like a loom, but it will also help auto generate the tools. It's a Chrome extension that I love. Um, so it will like, you take a recording, like a loom video, but then it can transcribe it because people learn in different ways. And that's something to be aware of when you're building out your remote team is, you know, how does this person take instruction best? Or, you know, are they an audio person? Or are they a visual person? So that way you have two forms of instructions for them. Yeah. So is this something you also help entrepreneurs with like the managing of their teams? Yes. Okay. So yeah, there we go. because it yeah. all kind of ties hand in hand. It just depends on what stage of your business you're at. Like You definitely, I work with mostly on building out remote teams once they hit multi six figures, typically, because, you know, when you're anywhere from, you know, 70 to like 150 in revenue, 
you can have one or two team members and it's not overwhelming for you to manage. It's when you start to get more team members, more clients, and usually maybe they don't have visibility into, you know, what's happening. Um, their project management will maybe kind of messy or they don't have a communication policy in place, things like that, that start to happen. But it's all tied back to operations because it's just different forms of it. Um, and it depends on if it's external or internal facing. So everything team related is internal operations and then client facing stuff, external, like the sales, the marketing, client deliverability. Yeah, that's great. I feel like we can keep talking forever. Um, I know. But yeah, one point here too is that you, I like what you said is like, if you are having like some kind of problem with your team member, you're trying to train them, it's, it's, not about like blaming them, but it's like taking a, taking like a big picture look at it and being like, okay, well, where could I give better, clear instructions? Like how does this individual learn better? Like you said, are they more visual? Are they more like, what, what is the best way for me to train this person? Um, yeah. So great, great tips. Um, before we wrap up here, I do want to just talk a little bit more because I know you have some something exciting coming up with um with your experience with domestic violence and um I know that they're you know we never know who might be listening who might be in a position where they might need some kind of support some kind of um just they might just need to hear that message that you know things can change for them and there's other people who have dealt with similar situations so If you just want to share a little bit more about what's coming up for you, that'd be great. Yeah. So it's actually great timing to, to talk about this because I just released a video on YouTube for my YouTube channel. Um, if anyone's listening, Julia is going to be also featured on my channel at the end of the month, but I just released a video on YouTube about domestic violence awareness because October is domestic violence awareness month actually. And, um, I'm releasing, well, I co-authored a chapter in a book with 30 other women who talk about their story and how they, this, how they overcame their struggle to have their business and have their, um, what their journey was like. So my chapter is thrive over survive, which goes along with my other YouTube series. And it's all about, um, raising awareness and creating advocacy for those who are struggling. Like you mentioned that you never know who's going through it or what they're going through. And it's a lot of people don't feel comfortable sharing. I'm at a point where I'm very comfortable sharing my story and how it helped me build my business, how my business helped me heal from that. Um, so thrive over survive is, I will actually have the paper copies tomorrow. So I, they're available and my chapter will be available to download on my website. And my YouTube channel is also has some great resources. If you are struggling, or if I always say my DMS are always open, even if I don't know how to help, I can find people that can, um, to help get you out of that situation. So you're not just living in fear or living a life you don't love. That's the whole mission of ELF operations. And, or if you're looking for, you know, you're in that situation and you're looking for flexible work. Um, that's my whole goal for 2023 is building out my agency to hire more women and moms who need that flexibility, but aren't able to put their face and name out there on their brand yet. That's beautiful. I love that. Thank you you for letting me share about (laughs) it because it means a lot to me to put it out there. Yes. That's amazing. And I'll share those links um, in the show notes for everybody. Um, We'll share that on social media as well. So, um, you know, you can reach out to um, to Emma and if they want to connect with you, if someone's listening and they need help in their business, what is the best place to find you, your website or anywhere else? Website, Instagram, YouTube, it's everything is elf operations. So if you search for elf operations, I will come up. (laughs) Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on today, Emma. I loved this conversation. I'm such a proponent of taking a look at a business from all different angles. And most of all, making sure that entrepreneurs are focusing on their brilliance and letting systems and team do the rest. (laughs) So thank you so much. Um, This is really valuable and um, we'll talk again soon. Thank you so much for having me, Julia. And thank you, everyone, for listening. 
Thank you for listening to the Elevated Femmes Movement. I would love to hear your thoughts on the podcast, so please leave us a review. If you know someone who could benefit from the episodes on the show, please share it with them. We need more women elevating to their highest potential, enjoying all the great things in life, having plenty of time freedom for their children and loved ones, while growing a business that improves, not consumes their life, and doing things in a smarter, not harder way. To connect with me and download my free resources, please go to www.juliamhickman.com.